We want to thank everybody for coming out today. And we would like to welcome you to our press conference today. I'm going to introduce the uh, two gentlemen to my right up on the dais. Of course, the president of basketball operations and Warriors general manager. Actually, that's uh, NBA champion, Golden State Warriors, Bob Myers. And the gentleman immediately to my right, the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. He was a duck. He's now a warrior, Jordan Bell. My name, is, my name is Tim Roy, and I'm the voice of the Golden State Warriors. We want to thank everybody who's watching on NBC Sports Bay Area, on warriors.com, on our flagship station, 95.7 The Game, Dubs Radio. Thank you for listening, and we get to know a little bit about Jordan. We're going to have both these guys speak for a moment. I'm going to ask them a couple of questions to the members of the gathered to press. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We have people standing on the wings with microphones, and they will get it to you. And then, of course, we will end with a, a photo opportunity for everybody with cameras, and then you'll have a chance to come up and, and talk to Jordan in a media session as well. First, uh, Bob, tell me a little bit about last night, and, and uh, why was it so important for the Warriors to make this move at 38, which seems to be a popular number uh, in your draft room? We only pick players at 38. I mean, um, <laughs> no, if he can be as good as Patrick was for us, that would be fantastic. Yeah. But um, we, uh, we had Jordan ranked higher than, uh, than 38. And so without having a pick, we didn't have you know, any definitive way of getting there. And so we basically started calling all the teams from 31 down and working on trades and offering things and in the hopes of getting Jordan. And... Um, Fortunately for us, I know it was stressful for you, but for us, he got to 38. Um, we were in contact with Mike Tellum and his agents, and uh, they were great. So, um, you know, we, we try to draft guys that help us win. It's, it's pretty simple. I saw Jordan playing in, in Maui. We, everybody that watched any of the tournaments saw that. Um, so we're familiar with him. But uh, Joe Lacob uh, doesn't like to sit and just watch the draft happen. We have to... <laughs> There's a kind of a mandate to do something. And in this case, it was something that we think was really good in, in getting a guy like Jordan. Well, you mentioned Michael Tellum. He is down here, Jordan's agent, along with his uh, girlfriend, Carissa West. We thank them for coming out today, and, and uh, great to have you guys here inside this beautiful facility, which is, of course, housing the defending champions. And how does that sound to you, Jordan, that you're coming to the defending NBA champions? Um, it's definitely a blessing. Um, this best situation that can happen, me joining a great team like this, uh, being able to learn from all the players, Steph, Clay, Draymond, who I try to emulate my game out there, um, it's just the best fit for me. I think last night I saw your, your tweet right after the announcement of the trade. You said, let's go, Steph. Was that you? No, I didn't tweet it. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Somebody, somebody <laughs> did that for you. Somebody oh, did, did really? that for you. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Steph okay. texted me after yeah, the pick. Yeah. He was excited. So. Oh, cool. I don't think he tweeted. I don't have Twitter, but he texted me. There we go. So if you have a question for either one of these guys, please raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone as we go along. I've got a couple of more questions. And, and Jordan, tell me a little bit, if you were to, talking to someone here in the Bay Area who has never seen you play, mm -hmm. describe your game. Um, I'm just a hard worker. Um, I'm a, I call myself a glue guy. I'm doing all the little things on the floor to help the team win, rebounding, diving on the floor for loose balls, uh, blocking shots, guarding the best player, like whatever, like any intangibles, whatever it is to help team win, I'm trying to do. So if you have a question, I think we have a, please identify yourself and, and your place of business. Uh, so you get your mic up here and for Anthony. Yeah, um, so I was in a garage um, with my high school coach, my college coach, and Mike called me, let me know exactly what was going on. He told me I was going to the Warriors. Um, I didn't even know who had the 38th pick at the time. He just told me 38, like my name's going to be called. So um, I, was, I tried to play it cool, like when I was tired, like I was mad. Obviously, people had me going a lot higher, so I tried to like keep that demeanor. Like I was really mad and like disappointed. I sat down with like, a mean look on my face and then, like, once the commercial came on, they already had made the announcement. So I got up, yelled, screamed. Um, I was screaming because I knew I was coming here. Everybody was screaming because my name finally got called. But um, 
after everybody settled down, tried to like calm everybody down, I was like, look, like I got some better news. Like I'm going to the Warriors, defending champions. Um, so once I said that, people got even happier, and that night it was just great. I think uh, Monty has a question. Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Jordan, when you guys made the tournament last year, uh, we saw how you played, obviously played very well. But did your mindset change when you got on the big stage? Because some guys, you know, embrace that situation. Mm -hmm. And just go take us through what you were going through mentally and physically during the NBA NCAA tournament. Um, yeah, me definitely. I always think I play my best basketball when the moment's uh, the brightest. Um, and then us losing Chris, where uh, his torn ACL, definitely um, everybody knew he had to step up. Um, but I definitely uh, tried to put the team on my back. Um, understand I have to do what I do regularly, plus what Chris normally does. So I tried to just do whatever, like, do, like literally do whatever the team needed to win, um, blocking shots, rebounding. Like that was my main focus coming in, just defense, because I knew Tyler and Dylan were going to take care of the offense. So I knew if I uh, anchored the defensive end, just handled that side of the uh, court, I knew we would win. So I tried to just play my hardest on that side of the floor. I think we got right here in the third row. Hi, Jordan. Janie McCauley from AP. Um, I saw both your games in Sacramento uh, covering mm -hmm. those tournament games, and you guys seemed to be a team that had a lot of fun together mm -hmm. and, and close-knit. And uh, what, what does that mean to you to come to a team like the Warriors that has you know, a pretty fun time mm -hmm. and, and a team that likes to hang out together, and, and also for you staying on the West Coast and yeah. just being close to your family and yeah. friends? Um, definitely staying on the West Coast is great for me. Like, I'm not too close to home, um, but I'm still close enough, like 45 minute flight. So, and then the weather obviously gets enjoyed that. Um, and then the way, yeah, I think, I think we tried to play like the Warriors this year. Everybody was super fun. Everybody, we all hung out with each other outside of basketball, like the whole time. We're all roommates, lived in the same apartments. Um, and I think the way the Warriors play, like we all gave up our egos because we were just trying to win. Like obviously, um, Tyler could go off for 20, average 20 on any other team. Dylan, Dylan Ennis, because anybody on our team could go somewhere and average 20 points. Um, but we all gave up a certain part of us um, just for, uh, for the better of the team to help us win. And the Warriors do the exact same thing with adding Kevin Durant this year. I think um, giving up their egos, understanding like the championship is way more important than stats at the end of the day. We have a question, Ron. Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. You mentioned you emulated Draymond. Mm -hmm. What are sort of the roots of that? How did that start? And what, what about him have you tried to uh, duplicate, I guess? Mm -hmm. um, I just love his toughness. Um, and then the chip he plays with on his shoulder. Um, coming in, people kind of like me saying he's undersized. He, they don't know what position he plays. Too small, not athletic enough. Like little things people say about me, I can't shoot, things like that. So um, he just plays with that chip on his shoulder, and I just love his aggressiveness on um, offense and defense. Defensively, just anchoring the defense, guarding every position, one through five, switching, um, talking, being that, uh, the heart and soul of the defensive end for the Warriors. And then offensively, understanding the kind of players he has around him, getting them more shots, rebounding, kicking it back out to Kevin setting really good screens for uh, Steph, getting him open, Clay, everything like that. So just the, he's just a real uh, team player, and that's exactly the kind of person I try to be. Um, I can learn a lot from him, obviously, um, especially at this age right now, like the way he's playing. Um, I think if I just keep watching him, uh, pick his brain, um, I got my locker next to him, so that's good for me. I have to <laughs> practice every day. I can try to get something out of him. Uh, um, and on the court, you know, just having to guard him, like learning little intangibles, things like that, uh, like just little things I can learn from him. And then also, um, Andre Iguodala is one of my uh, favorite players of all time. Um, just a guy who does everything, kind of like Draymond. So definitely just picking all their brains, just learning as much as I can from everybody on the team. You know, Bob, uh, listening to uh, Jordan talk, I'm, I'm struck by his answers and and. Culture and chemistry have been two words that have been used a lot in describing this organization. How did that factor in in, in uh, going after Jordan Bell? Well, you, if you watch basketball, um, which I think everybody here does, uh, you see that Jordan, I think first and foremost, loves to play basketball. And, and that sometimes gets overlooked in our jobs, is just a passion for what we do. And, you know, a lot of how he plays, whether it's blocking a shot, finishing a play, running the floor, being there for his teammates, that's the type of people that ultimately lead to winning championships. We want as many of those people as we can get. And, and to be honest, there's not everyone is like that. 
um, those people are hard to find in any walk of life. So when you see somebody like Jordan that clearly exhibits those things, that just, that just shine through the way he plays and his demeanor, you see a great teammate. You see somebody that cares about winning and then hopefully putting him in the mix with our guys who feel the same way and think the same way, it just, it amplifies us. It, it makes us better. Um, Draymond will be fun challenge for you. <laughs> Draymond texted me after I was driving home and he said, what the, and then expletive is your problem to me. So you can fill in the blank. And then he said, I have to hear about this expletive on the internet. You didn't expletive tell me about it. Um, so I couldn't text and drive. Um, so I called him and I said, okay, all right, calm down. And uh, I said, he said, I need his number. I need to talk to him. And so I gave it to Draymond. And I don't know what he said to you. You can tell everybody else. But he, uh, he's kind of like our every, he's like our team mom in a way, you know. He's the one that you have to kind of get through him. And you're going to love playing because, you know, to be honest, with Draymond, it's about respect. And I'm sure without even, just by watching you, that, that's what you earn with him. But that's the type of team we have, but, but we feel like that's who you are too. So we're excited. I mean, our draft room was thrilled and um, it was nice to see that you were too. There was, Tim knows this, he's worked for us for a long time. There was an era where you might have been screaming out of a different emotion than joy <laughs> hearing that the Bulls and the Warriors. So we're happy that you were happy. Right here, second row. Uh, CJ Peterson, SF Bay. Uh, a lot's been made of your you know, defensive capabilities. Um, but what do you think you can bring to the table as far as in, uh, on the offensive side of the, of the floor, considering this team is already historically offensively great? Mm -hmm. um, I think I can bring that kind of uh, feel like Tristan Thompson has. Like, obviously, with Kevin, Steph, and Clay, Draymond, like, they obviously going to get all the shots on it, and I'm totally fine with that. So I think offensively, the thing I can do for them is get them more shots, off, getting them more um, offensive rebounds, I mean, rebounds, setting uh, good screens, really getting them open. Um, finishing out the rim, make people have to really guard the pick and roll. Um, so I think offensively, just trying to find my uh, my uh, spot with the, how they play. Over here on the left, Jacob Palmer, San Francisco Examiner. It sounds like uh, you know between the video of you celebrating last night, and it sounds like you talking about your place in the offense and defense that you thought a lot about it. But do you find yourself you know daydreaming about being on this team? And was that happening maybe even before the draft? Um, so. Um, no, not, I, I didn't think Warriors would be an option for me. Like I knew um, they wanted me, but um, like this, I don't think they, I didn't think I would go. I wouldn't think I'd have slipped that far in the draft. Um, so I, I knew there was no way they were getting into the first round. So my mindset was like any of the teams from 20 to uh, 30, and then trades start happening, people start going ahead of me. So um, as I started slipping back, um, Mike was calling me. He was like, "Yeah, it's a chance you can go to the Warriors," and I was like. Like, I'm mad, but I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, let me know what happens. And then, like I said, once, once I got that call, he was like, yo, like, you're going to have to leave L.A. and go to the Bay Area. I was start screaming, yelling. Uh, I was in a garage. Me and my coach were just hugging, just, just ec uh, ecstatic about the whole situation. Anthony Slater, Bay Area News Group. Jordan, uh, first things first, what did Draymond say to you? <laughs> <laughs> so he FaceTimed me, and I didn't, like, obviously I didn't have his number. And I was with my friends celebrating, and um, I texted the number. I texted the number back, and I was like, "Who is this?" And then um, he didn't even reply. So I called the number, and I was like, "Yo, who is this?" And then he was like, "He was like, yo, I Facetime you. Hang up right now and Facetime me back. Don't call me." So I was, I was like, "All right, yeah." <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, you're right." So I, uh, so I uh, hung up and I Facetime him. He didn't answer, and I was like, "All right." <laughs> So then I just like I was like I should wait like a couple seconds and I waited like like five seconds. I called him back FaceTime and he answered and he was like yo and I was like yo what's up man blah 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 and we just started uh, talking about it. He was like yo enjoy this night, um, celebrate it only happens once. But after this night like we have to get back to work like we trying to get rings over here so be ready for it. And then other than that, what other relationships do uh, do you have any relationships with any other players on the team and, and who else has reached out since you got drafted? Um, Kevin Durant texted me today. Uh, Coach uh, Kerr called me uh, today and yesterday. Um, other than that, I saw I played against Kevin Durant in the Drew League one time. So uh, uh, he gave us like fifty, so like fifty-six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
We won, though, but, yeah. <laughs> Steve Bitker with KCBS. Did you watch any of the NBA playoffs? And if you did and you watched the Warriors, did um, had you seen professional basketball like this before? Mm -hmm. What did you think about it, and did you fantasize at all playing for this team? Um, yeah, I definitely uh, watched uh, every single game I was uh, able to watch. Um, it's funny, I was actually working out for the Sacramento, uh, I mean Sacramento, the San Antonio Spurs, and they played the Warriors, so I went to the game there and got to kind of see it live, and I was just like, wow, like, this is crazy. I, like, seeing it live is way totally different than seeing it on TV. Um, so just seeing them live, I was like, yo, like, I would feel so good with this team. Like, they love playing basketball, they run, they move. They're so unselfish. I was like, I would fit so good on this team. And just watching, I was like, just amazed, like, how good they are. Go ahead, buddy. If you weren't playing basketball, I mean, do you ever think about what you would be doing with your life if you weren't playing basketball? I read some interesting stuff about just your background and how you fell into basketball and what it's done for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, me personally, if I wasn't playing basketball, I most likely would have stuck with football because that's what I started playing throughout my whole life. Um, so I was definitely doing something athletic. Just grew up doing that. Um, it was other what, what what position? Football. Uh, oh, what position. position? Uh, I play receiver and uh, defensive end. So uh, definitely have the toughness with the defensive end, trying to hit people, uh, get the quarterback, and offensively just finessing people with footwork, things like that. And I think that's the reason I moved so uh, well at my size. And what role did your coach at Long Beach Poly play in you getting to this point? Um, he was there every step of the way. Um, he was supposed to come here today, but he already had a vacation plan. Um, but he's since right after college, I mean, after high school, was there with me in college, calling me, texting me about life, basketball, and then throughout this whole process, like helping me choose uh, Mike and Aaron, um, agents, like meeting up with them, and then during the season, like keeping all the outside noise away from me, letting me just focus on basketball and things like that. Yeah. Jenny, Jordan, ah. Oh. See, seeing how the Warriors use so many different guys, and one night it might be mm. McGee off the bench or Livingston or mm. Ian Clark or Andre, um, how, how encouraged, or Patrick McCaw, as Bob mm. mentioned, um, how encouraging is that to see the way they operate, that you can come in and, and make an immediate impact as a rookie? Yeah, um, de definitely. Um, I think seeing like how they use their young players, how everybody on the uh, team plays a lot, I think that definitely uh, gives me motivation. Like, I know I'm going to get on the floor to see some, time, some type of time, minutes, whether, like you say, any kind of game, it might change. It might be a lot, maybe a little. But I think the way they play their players, um, everybody gets a shot to show uh, what they can do and definitely uh, add up to more minutes every game. Ron? Bob, what does it say? I mean, when a team drafts a player, usually the focus is on his offensive game and the numbers he put up. And here's a guy who was defensive player of the year in the Pac-12, and it seems like that's his leading skill. Uh, no disrespect to his offense, but what did that say about what you were looking for and sort of about the makeup of your team, which obviously is so effective offensively? Um, was that sort of a point of emphasis for you as you looked for a player? I mean, it is probably Jordan's strength, I'd say, but we don't want to limit that. And um, I could see games where he scores a lot of points for us. I mean, it's at his position, because of the other guys that we have out there, there's going to be some nights where he's got some easy opportunities. Uh, but mostly what we see, Ron, or what we saw, what we think, is that um, if you're out on a basketball court and you're playing against Jordan Bell, that's going to be a problem. That's all we look at it. it, it you know, whether, and, and we're glad he's on our side because just the force with which he plays, the energy with which he plays, I don't really worry as much about, you know, people, people credit a guy like Draymond Green for his defense, but... You know, when you're in this and you're trying to build something, you're trying to build a group of people that do one thing, and that's move towards winning. And his college team obviously did that. It's not a coincidence that his team was great in the Pac-12 and great in the NCAA tournament. You put guys like him and the teammates he credited and have a great coach like Dana Altman, things, good things will happen. So we don't miss that. Um, we didn't miss that. It's, it's hard to miss that with Jordan, but... Um, defense is half, half the game. Sometimes people forget about that. Uh, and we take pride in defense. It started with, you know, Mark Jackson, his staff, four or five years ago, and Steve's continued it. But, I mean, you don't, you don't win championships without defense. So I, I would say Jordan does that well, and he's going to get better at that. But also offense, I'm sure 
he would sit here and say he's got room to grow in every area. So we, we look at him as a basketball player that's going to get better under our, under our system and under our coaching staff and playing with our guys. Yeah, Jordan, um, I watched all five Oregon games in the NCAA tournament. There was a great run. You were fabulous. And, of course, it ended in heartbreaking fashion. Have you, uh, do you avoid thinking about that, or have you processed it, come to grips with it, and what have you learned from it? Um, no, I definitely don't try to forget it. Um, I think everybody should play with, like, some kind of chip on their shoulder or something that motivates you, pushes you to, like, be better. So I think the moment um, I think you're referring to, the NCAA, like when I missed the rebound on the free throw, um, definitely um, want to just keep that with me at all times. Um, I remember things from high school where I missed the blockout or I missed the shot or some kind of thing that still motivates me to this day. Like, it's definitely going to stay with me, definitely going to push me to be a, uh, become a better basketball player. R.C.? R.C. Davis, Warriors Radio, Warriors.com. Bob mentioned Dana Altman. How much did he have to do with your success in getting to this point? Um, he, he's definitely had a lot to do with my success. Um, his, uh, his definitely his coaching style, um, it definitely um, was the right fit for me and the way he plays. And then him uh, being, being uh, such a college coach for so long um, definitely taught me the game, um, made it way easier for me. Like, you know, nowadays, like with the highlights and the ballers life, who makes they ball the stuff like kids don't focus on, like, the simple things. Like, they want to go between the legs like 30 times and stay in the same exact spot like he like he like straight lane like little things like he taught me like they just made the game so much easier for me and um so he's definitely helped me a lot with um, that aspect you've handled yourself like a pro up here by the way Thank you're doing you. a great <laughs> job uh i have last question and that's gonna be for me uh has it sunk in yet has it hit you yet that you're a golden state warrior that you're a professional player in the NBA? I think it hit me when they uh, showed me the jersey inside. Yeah, and I was like, oh, Leo, that's my name on the back. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's, speaking of the jersey, <laughs> we have the uh, jersey. We're going to do a photo op. Before, before we do the photo op, I did have one question. As an Oregon guy. Yeah. This is Ray looks. Ritter, by the way. <laughs> as, an Oregon, <laughs> as an Oregon guy, can you tell me or confirm to us how big Jim Barnett is on campus there? How big who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I needed. Thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> wow. And that's how we ended today. I'll take that from you to get that out of there. Setting, come back up here to the podium. Oh, yeah.